A programmer called Brendan explains that scientists put rats inside mazes to study how organisms use their memory to learn, adapt, and evolve as they create an internal map of their world. One day, Brendan goes to the beach with his wife Claire and their daughter Sam. They have a wonderful time together. Sam tells them that she'll go looking for shells with her curious George toy, promising not to get in the water. However, while Sam is distracted with the shells, the waves take away the monkey, so she gets in the water to retrieve it. Sadly, she drowns. The family offers all their support to the parents through the funeral, but Brendan and Claire are still devastated. Claire still feels like this isn't real, and Brendan can barely function, constantly crying in his daughter's room. A few months later, Claire decides it's time to move on and starts packing up Sam's room. However, Brendan isn't ready yet, and he immediately freaks out, and he grabs his daughter's favorite book. He notices the title, Berenstain Bears, is written with an A, although he remembers it with an E. Later at night, Brendan can't sleep, and he suddenly hears a noise. It turns out, it's just his brother-in-law Matt drinking a beer in the kitchen. Brendan asks Matt about the book title, delighted to hear that Matt also thought it was written with an E. Since Brendan still can't sleep, he searches for an explanation on the internet and finds thousands of articles about it. Lots of people have the same memory as he does and think it's a conspiracy, but eventually Brendan comes across something called the Mandela Effect, a phenomenon in which a whole group of people shares fake memories. The next morning, while Claire is getting ready to finally return to work, Brendan notices a family picture on their refrigerator. He remembers that the photo was taken in a different location. He also asks Claire to confirm that she remembers the picture being taken there. Claire thinks he's just confused and gets back to work. Afterward, Brendan shows Matt what he's found about the Mandela effect, including a whole explanation and lots of examples, like the death of Mandela himself, Darth Vader's quote, and the spelling of Looney Tunes. Brendan is convinced they're jumping between parallel realities or part of a simulation, but Matt doesn't take him seriously. Later, Brendan visits a priest to ask why God would take the life of a child like Sam. The priest explains that Sam's death wasn't God's plan or desire, it was just a matter of free will, which many consider the greatest gift that God ever gave humanity. When Brendan returns home, he finds out that Matt told her sister everything, and she is mad because she wants him to move on. Brendan asks her to describe the Monopoly man, and Claire mentions he has a monocle, but when she checks the game box, she sees the little man actually doesn't have anything on his face. Then Brendan brings out Sam's Curious George book, saying the monkey used to have a tail on the drawings and even swearing that Sam's plushie had one as well. Claire doesn't like their daughter's death used like that, but Brendan just keeps going. When he starts talking about reality shifting, Claire snaps and scolds Brendan for refusing to move on and pouring his grief into this dumb obsession instead. Sometime later, Brendan and Claire go out on a double date with Matt and his new boyfriend. Then Brendan and Matt go to the bar and discuss about what happened last days. Matt reminds him he and Claire need to support each other. As soon as he gets home, Brendan jumps on the computer again to research the simulation theory, which says we live in a computer programmed reality. Brendan's notes grow, and he starts keeping up a board, desperate to find proof of a parallel universe where Sam is still alive. He finds out about Dr. Roland Fuchs, who is supposed to be working on a way to prove that everyone lives in a simulation. The file he downloads is corrupted, and he can only watch a 30-second clip from Dr. Ronald Fuchs. Then after this fail, he sends an email to Ronald trying to meet him. Brendan never hears back from Fuchs, so he travels to the university to contact the doctor in person. However, Fuchs is too busy, and he doesn't have time to hear a random fan's rambling. Later that night, Brendan tries to be a better husband and starts getting frisky with Claire, but he stops in the middle of it because he thinks he can hear Sam calling for him. Frustrated, Claire tells him he should see a grief counselor. The next day, instead of seeing a counselor as he promised, Brendan shows up at Fuchs' house and convinces him to give him a few minutes of his time. Fuchs explains that the Mandela effect is just a case of fake memories. However, he also thinks they're breadcrumbs left by the simulation we live in glitching after a system update. Brendan points out that if reality is just a computer code, then he should be able to hack it, but Fuchs thinks that's ridiculous and takes him to the university. On their way there, 
They discuss the possibility of the world existing only because a conscious being is observing it. Brendan compares it to video games and how they only load an area when a player enters it. The rest of the time, those areas don't exist. So instead of hacking the simulation, what he needs to do is overload it to overwhelm the processor. Only a very powerful machine could do such a thing and Fuchs reveals this university has a quantum computer. They enter the lab together, but when Fuchs is explaining how to enter a code, they're interrupted by Dr. Manning, who doesn't approve of Brendan's presence. So they have to leave. Later that night, Brendan dreams of Sam's death, and wakes up when he hears her calling for him again. He rushes to Sam's room and sees a human shadow, which suddenly glitches and disappears. He tries to go for a drive to clear his mind, but he can't stop seeing the world as a giant chain of code connected to a quantum computer. Eventually, he falls asleep in the car and wakes up in a random alley downtown. Suddenly, he hears a horrible high-pitched sound and he screams in pain as reality starts glitching, only to suddenly blink and wake up in his usual bed. When Brendan leaves the room, he's shocked to see Sam in her own room. However, when he tries to follow them, he only finds his wife washing her teeth. Brendan thinks he's going crazy and Claire tries her best to comfort him. Afterward, Brendan goes to the library to pick a bunch of books on quantum computing and starts working on a code that could overload the simulation. The next few days, Brendan only spends his time coding. One night, Sam appears in her parents' room and climbs into bed because she had a nightmare. Brendan sleeps peacefully next to her, but in the morning, he wakes up to an empty bed. Thinking it was a dream, Brendan goes downstairs, but this time Sam is there as if nothing happened. Claire and Matt treat her normally too, so Brendan calls everyone he knows to confirm his suspicions. Nobody remembers Sam dying, so reality has been rewritten. He tries to discuss this with Fuchs, but he won't answer his calls. Brendan thinks the simulation gave him his daughter back. The family spends lots of time together and is very happy until one night when Claire wakes up from a terrible nightmare in an awful state. She swears she's just fine and she just had a bad dream. Brendan takes the family to paint some pottery together. Suddenly, he sees Claire getting aggressive, smashing objects on the floor. Brendan decides to return home and tries to make Claire rest. But she keeps staring at Sam and freaking out, saying the girl shouldn't be there. Worried that the reality shift is making his wife sick, Brendan asks Matt to babysit Sam and runs to Fuchs' house, only to be received by the doctor's wife. It turns out he self-deleted two months ago because he wasn't taken seriously by the science community. Determined to make things right, Brendan rushes to his house and starts working on the code again. He also records a video for his family just in case the simulation kills him the way it killed Fuchs. When the code is finally ready, Brendan goes to the university and tries to access the quantum computer, only to be blocked by Manning, who tries to call security. Brendan jumps on him to stop him, but he accidentally pushes too hard and Manning hits his head when he lands on the floor, instantly dying. Once he reaches the computer, Brendan implants his code with the USB stick and he watches the numbers go by as the computer lights flicker. Soon, the machine starts to make a weird noise, so Brendan rushes outside, only to discover that the parking lot is empty and his car is gone. In a blink, he finds himself on a bus, and he gets a call from his wife saying she doesn't feel good. At that moment, he notices a passenger glitching as she goes through the bus floor. Eventually, Brendan gets home and rushes to hold his wife and daughter close as the environment around them also glitches like crazy. Claire's face glitches too, and she screams in pain before everything goes pitch black. Then the code appears on the screen as the universe reboots itself from the very beginning of existence. When the reboot finally stops, Brendan is glad to be on the beach with his family again. This time when Sam mentions she'll go looking for shells, Brendan makes her leave the curious George behind saving her life. That's it guys, personally, I would give an 8 to this movie. I really enjoyed it, 